Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today I'm going to do the rear brakes on my Honda Civic. Now these are the newer Civics and they have the electronic parking brake. So um, a lot of people, if you look at the forums, um, a lot of people are having problems. Not only DIYers, but a lot of mechanics are on there going, what's going on? What did I do wrong? Uh, anyway, so what I did find was for that, I found the Honda Tech Info uh, rear brake pad removal and installation um, and this is like a Honda Tech um, manual that they have and I scammed this off of somebody off the internet <laughs> uh, so before we get started here a few of the tools that I'm going to use that you don't necessarily need um, I'm going to use an impact driver to remove the tires uh, a 17 mil deep impact socket um, little uh, blower attachment for my air compressor it's a disc brake caliper tool set um, just to compress the piston uh, I'm going to use one nail <laughs> a mini sledge I've got two adjustable torque wrenches a ratchet braking bar uh, we have two different uh, hex head um, hex head sockets and one is a 5 mil and one is a 7 mil and then I also use a regular socket a 17 mil and this is an E12 Torx socket and that is special for the electronic parking brake and then I use some disc brake lube um, I'm big on anti-seize a lot of people uh, are afraid of anti-seize no this won't change your torque specs um, no, it won't loosen your wheels while you're driving. This is to prevent them from rusting. That's it. All right. And then I use some release all WD-40, any of those sort of uh, products. Uh, a couple of slotted screwdrivers, a couple of wire brushes, one pair of needle nose pliers, uh, Phillips bit that I use to hammer with, and then just an impact driver to remove the tiny little screw. Um, Anyway, I'll show you how to do that the easy way. You hammer it, well, I'll show you. All right, so following the proper instructions and uh, I'll show you how to, to do the, the whole job the proper way. Almost forgot, disc brake cleaner and obviously your pads and rotors. Now the pads and rotors I got from CarQuest here in Ontario and it ended up costing me $239 for the deluxe pads and rotors for that Civic. Uh, the Civic I'm working on is a 17. All right, on to the brake job. So the first step I do is I chalk the wheels so that the car won't roll anywhere I use some old bricks just to keep the car from rolling on both sides next we're gonna find this flange under the car and that's your jack point and put your jack under that and jack up your car and we're just gonna jack up both sides until the wheels the rear wheels are off the ground by about an inch. So if you don't have an impact gun, um, before you jack your car up, use a braking bar, a 19 mil socket, and what you want to do is just do uh, one turn. You want to loosen it one turn on each bolt all the way around. One turn, and then when you jack up your car, you can actually take the wheels off. Um, if you don't then you won't be able to loosen the lug nuts. So, and if you do have an air gun, obviously it's real simple. Put the tool on, start in one place, and skip. Skip the next one. Oops. And sometimes it's hard to get the wheel off. So you can either give it a good shot here or a good kick. And the wheel should come off. That's what happens is it corrodes here and uh, 
then it's just stuck to your rotor. All right, sorry. After you jack your car up, you want to put an axle stand. I've got a couple axle stands, and they're just under a couple of frame members. And that way, that uh, if your jack fails, uh, it will pick up the weight on the frame on the uh, axle stands for safety. All right, so we can pop the spring off. Need that right now. Just kind of pop it out. You know, get that out of the way. There's two rubber boots on the caliper slides here. These rubber boots here. So you take them off. If you can't, just access them with like your fingernails. Uh, you can use a screwdriver. Pop them out. Now these use uh, just an Allen key bit, X bit. Yeah, what size is this? I think it's seven, seven millimeters. I'll move the caps out of the way. I'll loosen these off. Make sure they're in all the way. take these all the way out and you can just push them through with a small screwdriver push them out so we're gonna clean these up and re-grease them and reapply them after Put that off to the side that out. So the electric parking brake has a coupler, which I'm going to have to move the camera and show you over here. I'm going to blow that out just to uh, make it easier to, uh, to deal with. Alright, so there's, this is the coupler here that we have to remove. And right back here, I don't know if you can see it properly. There's the um, release tab. So we're going to push the coupler in a little bit, and then I'm going to push on the release tab, and then pull the coupler out as I push on the release tab, and there's your coupler. So here's your release tab here. Whoops. So you just want to push on that release tab like that. Okay. Just the push on the release tab. That's the one, okay? So, once the coupler's out of the way, you just tuck it in behind so it's not in the way anymore. Alright, now that that's out of the way, we can just lift this whole thing up. Okay, just slide that out. Sometimes the pads will come with it, sometimes they won't. So you can see my pads are in pretty good shape still. But, there's other reasons that I have to deal with this. I've got... Uh, a lot of noise coming off this. <laughs> so I'm just going to tap this pad out. There we go. Yeah. That looks really good still. Anyway. So now, I want to take this part off, and that's the electronic brake controller. And what we're going to do take a jack stand and slide it under here so that this can rest on it. There's two Allen keys here that you have to take out and then this one is a 5 mil. So two Allen key bolts. So just hold on to this so it doesn't go anywhere. I should take this out. They're not in there really tight, so it's not super difficult to do. There you go. 
take these all the way out. So yeah, remove both of those. Now, you can take this whole assembly apart. It's kind of tricky, you just have to kind of wiggle it and pull it, and then boom, the whole thing comes off, just like that. And that's it. That's your electronic parking brake, your EPD, your controller. Really simple. Now, now what you have to do is take, this is a E12 Torx bit, Torx socket, and we're going to turn this clockwise. And since my car is pretty new, I can turn it by hand. And you turn it until it stops. So turn it clockwise until it stops. And now you can push your piston in. I actually have a brake pad compressor tool. So I'm just going to put that in here. And try to hold on to it so it doesn't go anywhere. And just compress this once it starts. There we go. And just push it all the way back. You don't have to squeeze very hard. It'll go in really easy. And then when it stops, unscrew it and take this out. Okay. And you can see the piston itself is almost flush, not quite flush, with the rubber ring. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to clean off this area here with a wire brush. Just clean it a little bit. Nothing major. Just because your brakes have got to move around a bit. Okay. So, now I'm just going to hang this over here out of the way and take our rotor off. And we're going to have to take the other part of the caliper off. And this is what your brake pads sit in. So, they're held in with a 17 mil bolt and it's in there pretty tight it's uh, 55 newton meters or sorry 55 inch pounds so it's actually pretty tight so loosen that off okay. one at the top one at the bottom Here's your two bolts. Take them out. Make sure they're good. Now, once again, this part here where your brakes slide back and forth, they sit in here. So I'm going to clean that out with a small wire brush. So, because I want this to be able to slide, the brake pads to slide back and forth. Okay both sides. To get the rotor off, there is a screw in here. There's a Phillips head screw. And what we're going to do is use some uh, WD-40. In this case, I have release all and I'm going to spray around here, around each of the lug nuts, around the hub because these are hub centric so this fits right on top of the hub and where that screw is a little bit of penetrating oil on each one of these things will help to get your hub off easier now put on your safety glasses get your mini sledgehammer and a Phillips bit and put the Phillips bit in here and I pound it a couple of times, that'll loosen the threads. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to use my impact gun and take that out, and it pops right out. Now I'm going to take this off. Now, there's a couple of ways you can take this off. There's actually these screw hole, these bolt holes here. You can put bolts that size in, and you can crank them in and pop this out. But since I'm not going to reuse this disc, I'm just going to tap it with a hammer until it pops out. And then once it's freed up, you just pull it right out. Okay. Yeah, this one sounded really awful. It sounded like there was a rock stuck in it. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look like it was rubbing anywhere here. So, your new brake rotors have an oily film on them. So you're going to clean that off with a brake parts cleaner. And you just spray it on quite liberally. Give it a good hose down. Flip it over, get the back. And then I'm going to use some blue shop towels here. And I'm just going to take this up, drain all the stuff off of it. Just wipe it off. Wipe all the grease and stuff off of it. All the oil. That's clean and ready to put on your car. So now, I'm going to give this a quick wipe. And once again, I use my little wire brush. I'm just going to give this a quick scrub around the hub and get rid of the rust and any rust that's on here and any dirt that's on your lugs. You want to keep the dirt off of those. Okay, now I'm going to use anti seize compound. And a lot of people say, well, you don't really have to do this. And you don't really, but I mean, it helps to keep it from rusting. So I give it a little coat all the way along. Just a minor coat. And like I say, most people don't do this. But anybody that works on cars a lot has little tricks like this that they use. And this will keep it from rusting solid on there. It'll make it easier to come off. Now, I also put a little bit on each one of these lugs so that they don't rust on and that won't affect your torque at all it'll still be perfect all right now i'm going to put our our uh, disc back on and the spot here this little uh, chamfered part that's where the screw goes so if you don't need to use the screw and if you can't get the screw out, you can drill it out. So if you can't hammer that out like I did, you can just drill it out. You don't need it. Uh, it just makes it easier to assemble when this is in there and not flopping around. So I put the screw back in. And to keep the screw from rusting in place, I also put a little bit of anti-seize on that as well. Okay, so your disc is on, you're going to put this guy on here, and what we're going to do before we put that on is we're going to use our brake grease. This is the grease that came with my parts, so I'm going to... Squeeze the grease down to the end here, where I want it to come out the hole, and where the brake parts slide here, and apply a little bit of grease it's here, over here. I 
I also use a nail, so I take the nail and I put the grease, I rub the grease around because it's hard to move it around, especially even with your fingers. So I find just a regular nail does the job. Smear it around. Try to get even coverage. Alright, so that's that. Now this we can put right back on. So we'll put that in like so. And we're gonna put the bolts in. And once again the bolts, I give them just a little bit of anti-seize compound. And then hold these in place. Get the bolt started. I'm just going to tighten these up and then torque them off. So got my torque wrench set to 55 foot pounds and tighten her up so I'm going to take the brake slide pins here and I'm going to clean them off they have grease on them but it's really kind of dirty and sticky looking so I'm just going to use some shop towels and a wire brush if need be all right, after I have them looking like new, use disc brake and caliper lube. And I'm gonna coat these pretty much the whole thing. And right from top to bottom, basically. So before we put everything else together, we have to get this guy back on. So the splines have to line up with the one back here. Okay, and this motor hangs down right here. So remember, we turned it all the way clockwise. If we can't get it on, we can turn it back a little bit, right? We just have to line it up with these splines here. So let's see. I had some trouble with the other side. So, this goes in here, line where the bolts go together, and you just kind of wiggle it until it pops into place, and it's not popping into place. So, I'm going to turn this back just a tiny bit. I'm going to try this again. Again, line it up where it's supposed to be, and oh, and it pops right in like magic. So, these little guys that's a lot. Try to get a little bit of anti seize on there. Okay. And then put them in the holes, line them up. And these ones really aren't very tight. Let's go find the torque on those. I don't think they're very tight at all. You don't want to over tighten these, that's for sure. Okay. So make sure that this is all the way in. Everything is flush. Everything looks good. Nice even tightness on both of those. Make sure it's in all the way. All right, the instructions I have don't even give me a torque on this. So I'm just going to give it a little hand tightening here. That's it. Nothing major so that they don't fall out. 
just tiny, maybe like five inch pounds, <laughs> maybe seven inch pounds, or foot pounds, whatever it is. Not very much. Brake pads. Put the brake pads on. This part. This is the pad goes to the rotor. And it just drops in here. This one has a spring on it. It's the back of the pad. This is the part that goes to the rotor. It slides in here. Take your caliper. Put your caliper right over top of it. And it just slides right over top. Make sure those pins are in. Okay. Now I already lubricated the pins. Install the pins. Seven millimeters. Pounds or eighteen foot pounds. So set the bottom in, get that started, get the top in, and then we're just going to push that. that in and pop that around there we go now take your hammer and just tap that in okay that's it all right so now the coupler you just slide it in and push it in until it locks and you can actually hear it click. Try to pull it back. It should be flush right here. Let's get the flashlight in here. That edge should be flush. See where those markers checks are? I have to push it all the way in there. So, I'm gonna push it all the way in. Then I'm gonna try with my pliers to just kind of push it out. It's not pushing out at all. So, I'm gonna push it back in again make sure that it's all the way in looks good and that's that so these are torqued these bolts are torqued the bolts are in this all the way into the EP electronic parking brake all the way springs on everything's in the right position and we're gonna put our wheels on
just going to start them. forget to remove your axle stands. And you're going to slowly drop the car. Both sides. Alright, so it says, push the brake pedal a bunch of times, okay. and then we're not using the HDS because that's the computer, so uh, turn the vehicle to on mode. Apply the parking brake, then release the parking brake. So far so good. So the parking brake is on. Parking brake is off. Parking brake is on. Parking brake is off. Alright, and we have no codes except for our seat belt. I put on my seat belt, we're still in park, and everything looks good. All right, let's go for a spin. All right. Thanks for watching.